at you, Hermit Crap. My name is Tango the Hole Digger, and I am in a hole. Now, you might be asking yourself, why is Tango in a hole again? I mean, I hope he's just not doing this for fun. No, 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 no. You see, we are in the game. Wow, that was professional. I almost looked like I know what I was doing. <laughs> we are in the gaming district. I figured, you know what? I built this entire gaming district with Etho, and I haven't contributed to it yet. So I think today we're gonna make a game after we kill the skeleton. Maybe the skeleton will kill me. You know, when Etho and I designed this gaming district, we had some concerns. We, we knew it. We were admitting up front. We were like, you know what? There's probably going to be hard to fit a lot of the games in the spaces that we are designating. Like, for instance, you know, there was supposed to be like two or three games in under here, right? And then we were like, okay, two or three more over in under here. And so far, no one has built any games really inside like the, the proper gaming district. I mean, Azuma's game is there, but everything else is like, put me on the outside because I'm big and massive and can't possibly fit inside this gaming district. And that's not really, that's, you know, it's not really a huge problem, but I figured I'd do my part and try and put a game in one of the places where we kind of actually intended there to be games. So I'm going to put mine right here inside this wall. Now, my game is a little bit, it's not, it's not as big as some of those crazy games, but it is pretty big. So we're going to have an entrance here, a subtle little thing. And then there's probably going to be like a stairs down or maybe even like a little drop area here that we can woo and then ploop down in and play the game right in here. Oh, and for those of you that are wondering what happened to the slime farm, Tango, and the slime process of Fikator, you were working on all the fun stuff there. Don't worry, still being worked on? Possibly next episode. So today's game is going to be called Sticky Bombs. It's gonna, it's gonna be called Sticky Bombs because it's gonna, it's gonna be sticky and it's gonna involve bombs. So the sticky part is going to come from, you guessed it, our good friends, the honey blocks. Okay. Now these things, uh, you guys all know how this works, right? If you, if you, something slides down, an entity slides down the honey blocks, it's like, boo, it's all slow and honey and slurpy and kind of just weird. But you can also do the same thing with items. So blah, 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 blah. I'm going to do that. And then yeah, get down here. And then look, the items kind of just like drool down the side of the wall. Let's get another look at that without falling this time. Okay, there, down here, good. <laughs> it's such a cool little effect and they fall at such a good speed. So what I want to do is make a game where you have to yoink the items off the wall with a fishing pole like so. Eh. <laughs> and... <laughs> now it's not too hard to like this, you know, challenge one is getting the bobber to stick to the item, which it does, it's, it's got some forgiveness there for you. So that's not too bad, but then you got to yoink it at the right time and the distance in which you do this. And the real challenge is going to be, we're going to have a really wide wall here. So you're going to be running back and forth and being like, get that thing, get that thing over there. Okay. Get this thing over here. Get the, no, no, get that one. There, get it, blah, blah, blah. You know, something like that. So that's the sticky part, right? That's the, that's the honey and the pulling the items off the wall. But now there's going to be two types of items falling from the wall. We're going to have some kind of basic item. It won't be iron ingots. I don't know what it will be. Um, but there's also going to be these guys falling down. Actual TNT items, okay? So the two items you're going to have falling down now. The first one, you're going to have to pull off the wall and collect them and probably craft them into something like maybe a bigger block of some sort. I'm not quite sure yet. We're still figuring out the details. Um, and then throw it into a bucket and then bam, you get one point, okay? So you want to collect as many of those things as possible. And there may be, you know, different variations. You might get full blocks of the thing already. We'll get into all that later. But the, the interesting thing now is you're going to see also TNT is going to fall. And right now it's just a one to nine chance, so it's not making a very good argument. There we go. <laughs> Some TNT is going to fall as well. Now, if the TNT falls, and you don't get it and it gets to the bottom, oh, that's when the sad time happens. You see, you're going to be playing this game inside an obsidian box and every time a TNT gets to the bottom of the wall and you don't yoink it off, the badness happens. The TNT is actually going to drop from a dispenser in the ceiling now. So while you're trying to get pieces off, if a, if a TNT gets down to the bottom, you're going to have to dodge TNT that's falling on your face. It might make things challenging. So let's get started then, because all of this was just to explain the game. Now we got to build the real stuff.
wall of the sticky. It, it grows big. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we have we have the wall of honey blocks, and I, I don't know if that's the right height or not. I think that's roughly how high. Basically, it's judging like how much notice do I want to give the players that an item's coming. I think actually a higher wall is good because then you can kind of you know, strategize and plan, like, all right, I got this over there, I got TNT coming, I'm gonna get this, then this, then look at the TNT, and then, okay, I wanna go back over there, you know, like that kind of thought process, so you can kind of, it's almost like Tetris, right? As the items are falling down at random spots on the board, you have to start planning and looking ahead and and thinking about how you're gonna, how you're gonna do things. So let me show you how this works here. Uh, eventually, this in here will be lava, uh, and that is to uh, strongly discourage you from, you know, running over here and just being like, look, look, mom, catching all the items. But we'll save the lava for later because I'll probably kill myself with it. So the items fall down here into the water stream and they swoop underneath the uh, the wall of honey. There, okay. This is the hopper for the the TNT sortificator that picks up the TNT. Everything else will just kind of go underneath and into this bubble vader, which I will, you know eventually lift up to the ceiling and return the items um, and this is all here for basically the the tnt sorting system and stuff like that so eventually we'll have a signal that goes up and around to uh let the let the system up top know to drop some tnt so we got a decent amount done here we got the wall of the sticky sticky and some of the redstone in the back there's going to be a ton more redstone up top for all the randomizers and stuff which which i think you guys are going to like actually but we'll get to that in a bit uh for now i need to get to some science so where is my science box there we go there we go okay give me that give me that Okay, so what I need to do now is figure out where in this room I can drop TNT where it will safely destroy the player. You know, safely destroy the player, you like that? <laughs> and not destroy my delicate, delicate signs here. I don't know if that exists. Like, the player might be standing right here, right? Fishing, fishing, fishing. If that TNT drops behind them, I want them to get hurt. But I can't break those signs, so... I think TNT explosions go about five blocks, so if I put one there, let's say one, two, three, four, five, will probably hurt right here, but it's not going to be much. So, uh, <laughs> let's see, what, at worst we're going to break some shulkers here and maybe a bed. Alright, let's, let's see what happens, we're going to slowly start moving it forward, so, I mean, hurt me! Okay, okay, oh, and then, oh, <laughs> Oh, the evil just clicked in my brain. I just realized that not only are you going to get hurt, you're going to get blown into the lava. <laughs> anyway, I got the first stage of item dropper system thing working here. Or not working. I don't know if it works, but I got it in and built. We'll see if it works in a second. This is going to be for the, like, the normal items, the non-TNT items, the items that you have to pick up, pull off, craft into a block or something, throw into a, into a hopper and get a point. So you can see up there, there's a row of droppers and they are going to shoot items out into this glass. They're gonna fall down there into what will be a water stream right now. And now, all right, break these, breaky, breaky. Where's my bucket at? Do this, do that, fill it all up. And up here we have a crazy item randomized dropper system basically. So. Uh, how do I explain this? Uh, okay, so basically there's a there's a hopper circle. Like hop, this hopper line goes down and then it loops back on this side, okay? And there's just the right amount of missing items. You can see a gap there. There goes a gap right there. So there's like these spaces in the hoppers and that's intentional. There goes a the gap right there. So what's going to happen now? You can see that those comparators are essentially turning off in some kind of like semi pseudo random sequence there. And then periodically I'm going to unpower this line uh, based on a clock. And when I do, whatever comparator is not being powered, the corresponding torch that it points to will briefly turn on. So that's how we get kind of a, a very pseudo random, uh, you know, item dropping system here. So I'm going to turn the system on. And now you'll see, eventually, it's not working. There we go, there we go. My redstone is officially unbusticated now. So you can see that torch now is blinking off, like just like one tick or possibly two ticks, I don't know. But basically this line unpowers and when it does, you can see random torches kind of just flickering here. And every time one does, that's the dropper that will be spitting out an item. These rates are controllable based on gameplay. So I think I want to use snowballs. I think snowballs are going to be a good item to drop from the wall for a couple reasons. One, a high lightning and guy with a dragon thing on his face. What is happening over here? And it, oh wait, I got forgot. I got to take my shoes off. I forgot. I almost forgot. Uh, all right, so I want to use snowballs because first of all, two by two snowballs. Hi, derpy snowman. I think he's got three. 
Free, free, I like free. Does he sell snowballs? Snow. Uh, I should just, you know what, I should probably just get my own snowman. But anyways, I think, I think snowballs will be great because they, they'll show up good on the honey. It's a two by two, it takes four of them to craft a block, which is good. I can easily farm them. I, I think it's good, I think it's good. Okay, this is embarrassing. I haven't made a snowman farm thing in like a hundred years. I forget how to do it. I don't, I don't know. I think we put like a, we did a snowman up here like, like bam. And then, and then we break and we break. And we take shovel and we hold, right? We, we hold. Hey! I, I made a snow farm! I'm super technical at this game. Yeah, 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 it's all coming back to me. Big brain moment here. Okay, now if I push this guy in here, I think we, yeah, we can get like, he can like cover four blocks. I want you to get your bits in the corner there. And then I think I just, no, I said, get your bits in the corner. Eh, there we go. Okay, now I don't need this. Yes, okay. Uh, I guess I don't even need that or that. Everything's great. And now I can like hit the corner like, yeah. Oh, it's so, so good. Okay, we're back to our hole of mystery and fun and I've got snowballs built up here. So I wanna turn this thing on and see if it works again. Come on. It, yeah. Okay, no, no, okay. I guess that, I suppose that works. Okay, okay, they come. The, the, the hitboxes are on. Okay, <laughs> this is good. Oh, there's a lot of them coming down. Maybe that's okay, honestly. Maybe that's okay. Let's see here. I, don't know, I just want to sample these rates here. Like, yeah, okay, I could come over here and be like, yoink. There's definitely plenty. I'm questioning, is there too much? Don't forget, we're going to be adding TNT to the mix. We shouldn't assess this until the TNT is mixed in. So I think we're good right now. Now, speaking of the TNT, this one is going to be interesting. I want to show you generally how this is going to work here. So let me slap down not one of those. Let me slap down one of these guys. Okay, drop her here. Now we're going to grab some redstone ore and go like right there, okay? Now you guys know redstone ore, when an entity stands on top of it, it gets the little glowy glowy particle things and everything. And observers can see that, okay? So right now, if I go up there and stand on this, watch this, uh, hang on, put some other thing in there, okay? If I go up here and stand on this, bloop, it spits it out, okay? Because the observers saw the update of this block state changing and powered the dropper. And when that goes off, it'll do another update. But what we want to do here is we're going to grab some armor stands and we're going to put an armor stand right up on top here eh, like that. Okay. And now it is an entity. So as soon as let's see, see right before your very eyes, folks, be amazed. <laughs> the entity, the, uh, the armor stand up there keeps it active. So as soon as the timer on the dust fades, bam, it starts another one, but the observer still catches it. So what we essentially have here is like a really slow randomizer. I think it averages like every 60 seconds or something, which is really slow. But what we can do now is we can swoop over here and swoop over there and swoop like that. And then now we've got a double whammy jammy here, right? So I get now I can put a little guy over here. And now we just doubled the timer now for this one dropper. Okay, so now it's like a 30 second timer. Uh, and now what we can do is we can like stitch these all together and make a whole bunch of them one dropper for every column in the honey. Huge, huge update. Okay, I can't show you everything. It'll take forever, but you can see the line of redstone ore here. That uh, that's that that's the double on either side. You can't see it, but you can sec you can see I got some observers on pistons here. So what I did, this is how the threat of TNT drops will escalate through the game. Basically, this comparator strength here will start to spread slowly over the course of the game and go out to the ends, thus pushing down all of the, the pistons. So as each pair of pistons push down, it activates another redstone timing system, which is, yeah. So it's really cool. So as the game goes on, more and more TNT will drop. At the beginning, it's gonna be like barely nothing. And then as the game moves on, it's gonna be just dropping like crazy. And we finished the main room here. Just so, so much obsidian. So much obsidian, little stairs up there kind of make it a little bit fancy. I mean, there's not much you could do. I could have put crying obsidian in here somewhere. I didn't want all the drippy drippies though and everything. So I just kept it simple. Um, the thing I'm wor worried about now though, I mean, obviously these torches can't stay. And once I do, it's going to be dark in here. It's going to be a little bit of a mob farm action. <laughs> and I don't want someone to like start the game and come in here and be like, oh, creepers, I'm dead because I'm naked. That's going to be inconvenient. Ah, it is officially one of those nights. Oh, yeah. I, I just spent, I think, the last three hours tearing out all the redstone back here, redesigning it, redoing it. Oh. 
it's the worst. It's the worst. Yeah, I found I found a flaw in the way the items were flowing underneath the honey there, and they were getting stuck in the hoppers. It was dumb the way I had it set up. Uh, but the good news is this is way, way, way better. Before I had like bubble vaders up here that were kicking off to the back, and there was like jet engines and turbines. It, it was a bit over the top. Now it's much cleaner and and to the point now. On the bright side, we have light in here. <laughs> Yeah, these puns, they're so good. Coming at you, 10 out of 10. Mm -mm -mm. So, we decided to go with lava in here because it's about the only light source that is blow up proof. So, we're going to be dropping TNT from these four dispensers here. And we wanted to make sure that whatever was lighting up the area here wasn't going to be blown up or vacated. So, that brings up the next point, which is the actual explosions. And this is something I have a, a, a concern over, okay? Because there's no pattern, there's no timing, there's, it's just completely random how the TNT will drop here. And if two TNT drop at, like, the same time, basically, or, like, very close to each other, and the player misses both of them, you're going to get, like, a tick, tick. Two TNT are going to drop out, like, bam, bam, right? And that means that one TNT is going to explode while the other TNT is kind of sitting here still doing its sizzle, sizzle dance there, right? And then I, I'm hoping that it just pushes it sideways. It should. But if it blasts it forward, uh... Game over. Okay, okay, I think I'm ready to give this a test here. This is not the final design, but this is like, call this like prototype alpha one here, right? So I got my, my fishing rods here. I'll have more in there. And I'm thinking like up here is the hand in chest where you hand in the crafted snow blocks. Again, so remember now you're pulling snowballs off the wall, crafting them two by two in your own little personal crafting and putting them in here for a point. I think, uh, who knows, that may change. But the important thing is I wanna check the balance and the distribution of the snowballs, the TNT, the escalation of the TNT, how well I can dodge the TNT, all that good stuff that's probably gonna kill me in like two seconds here. So let's get the pressure plate down here. Stepping on that will start the game now. Let me get my, my handy fishing rod here and uh, let's go. Let's go. I need music. The game needs music. Is this running? Are we live? I don't think I'm live. Oh yeah, yeah I kind of forgot some redstone right there. Okay, fishing pole in hand, take two, go. Cue the Tetris music. I gotta get Etho over here to do the Tetris music. That would be so good. Okay, here we go, here we go. First snowball. What, the, why is there all this TNT so far? <sighs> no, uh-oh, uh-oh. I don't like, I don't like, nope, nope. Okay, that was dangerous. Okay, this is not working exactly as I planned. Do I need to be, I need to be closer, I think. I gotta, be, I gotta be holding shift. I think that's my problem. No. Okay. Game's flawed. Well, I'm getting TNT now. That's good and stuff. How about you? No. This guy's broken! I got a snowball! It's amazing! Okay, we're blocking. We're blocking. Okay. No snowballs, so we'll just, we'll just, we'll just block all the TNT. Okay, here we go. Got to get right up on the edge. Oh yeah, yeah. Look at that. Okay, well I got, I got two. I don't think I can get those. All right, you gotta get, you gotta, you gotta hit them when they're like still way up there. Hold ship. No. Save. Uh oh. Get. Okay. I, I would really like to have four snowballs. I'm not very good at this. No. Okay. Another fishing pole. Okay, that was too late. How about this guy? No, come on! I have four, I have four. I'm, I'm unstoppable, basically. Okay, look, that's a lot of TNT. Nope, nope, nope. Nope! Oh, that hurt, that hurt extra bad. Okay, we're gonna, we're gonna craft this, go, put that in there. I have one point. And I'm dead! Okay, round one. Let's get the official, official tally here. Hold on, let's see. Uh, to carry the six and the two, and then divide by six, and then two. one! We got one point, ladies and gentlemen. Woo! So, after that amazingly spectacular display of sticky bomb prowess that I, uh, that I clearly possess, there are a couple, couple of minor observations. <laughs> um, first, I think I might need to add another block here. So, these are the, uh, official prototype, uh, 
extendomatic blockificators here. Uh, they're in lieu of the more permanent obsidian because, uh, yeah, I don't know if I want to. <laughs> this is this is prototype. We'll see. I want. I, I feel like I feel like if I get right here, it's gonna be like look how close I can get though. Just look. I might as well just reach out and grab it though. I don't know about that. So that was one observation. It was really hard to get the snowballs off the wall without getting like right close. And I don't know that I want them to have to hit shift the whole time just because it's going to be super frustrating. Now, the other observation is the fishing rod just did not last. It was, I mean, what is it like? Is like eight little casts in your fishing rod bus? Like, that's just ridiculous. I did think the distribution, there was maybe a little bit too much TNT. But basically, I was just not getting snowballs fast enough. Even when I hit them and pulled, they were, I think they were just falling in the lava. So let's try again real quick with, uh, with, with the super prototype extendo bits here. And go! Okay, here we go. Do, 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 do. Need music really bad. But well, come on, what is this? No. I say nay nay. Look at this stuff. Bam! See? One right there. Yeah, uh-huh. Okay. This, I think, I think this is the money right here. Look at me go. Yeah. Oh, oh I'm going to fall in that lava if I'm not careful. Okay, you, you, you. Much better, much better. We need, like, some kind of, like, warning track or something when I get close by. So it's like, it lets me know. But I, don't, I, don't, I still want you to be able to fall off. Like, that's, that's part of the game. Yeah. Yeah, these little extendo bits made all the difference. Of course, I'm still a horrible aim with my fishing rod. This and that and this and go. I got two. I gotta get it in the barrel though. Oh, this, this fishing rod's gonna bust. Go, yeah, I gotta do it. All right, put you in there. I got two. I got a fishing rod here. Zip. Uh oh, no. Uh oh, oh. Did you sizzle? You sizzled. You sizzled. Okay. Yeah. Okay, we're gonna go to this one over here. Got it. This one here. Did not get it. I think the key is just gotta hold shift and get right up in there. Good. I should, maybe I should be able to do something with the TNT here. You guys have any ideas what I should be able to do with the TNT? Like, maybe I can put the TNT back into the system for, like, extra pornificators or something? I don't know. Okay, 12. Bam. Oh, look at this. Go. Three more. Do the thing. Nope. We're out. We're out. Oh, there's more TNT falling. More TNT falling. Where is it? Ah! Well, I think that's enough sticky bomb detonation for today. I think it's got a lot of potential, I gotta say. I think it's gonna be fun, but it's not there yet. It needs some work. I think I'm gonna work on it, like, in the upcoming live streams or something. Get some feedback from you guys. Maybe tweak some things. Maybe change a couple little things. But I think there's gonna be... There's promise here. And then once it's good, I wanna get some of the hermits over here to try it out. Maybe, maybe like, a, a co-op thing or something. Like, two people playing at once and see what their score could be. But, guys, as always, if you have, if you have ideas for how to improve this or how to make it better and more fun anything just leave me a comment and i'd love to hear your ideas because uh, i am not done with this yet but we are done with this video goodbye <laughs>